Hey y'all, welcome back. Y'all come on in. It's been a little while. Sorry about that. Had some other stuff to take care of. Didn't realize retirement life was going to require so much time. But let's continue on. Hopefully see if we can get a little closer to being finished with Mr. Calvert's belt here. If you've seen any of the last videos. And I've got it completely tooled now. I didn't do a lot of that on camera just because of the amount of time that it takes when you're doing a belt. So let me see if we can get y'all positioned here. But today we are ready to punch the holes in the end of it. For the tongue or the buckle to go through. And I wanted to go over the tools for that. I'm also going to try to get into the staining portion of it for those of you that want to get some insights into the, uh, the staining portion of it. We'll get into that in just a second. Or if you want to diet or anything, you know, stuff like that, we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. This one's not going to get any color dye on it. I do have some projects coming up after this, and I really need to get this finished. It's just taking way more time than what I anticipated, so. Let's get you guys, let me get you a little bit better situated here. But what I want to go over with you is, if you watch the other videos and the layout of the belt and stuff like that, I went over where I locate what's called the tongue of the belt. Um, and then I'll mark on one inch increments where the holes go. Ouch. And the uh, punch set, this is the mini punch set, also got from Tandy. Uh, has the different sizes on that. And then I've got in my shelf up there, I've got a maxi punch set. And these are just various sizes. I use them for a number of things if I'm going to be setting snaps, buttons, things of that nature. And that's what these are for. They make a rotary punch, a hand punch. But I'm at the age now to where my hands just can't. Just can't do that anymore. So I've gone to this, getting arthritis and stuff. So anyway, these come with the different tips in them, along with the holder. And they just thread together. They're different sizes. What I do to get the correct size that I want is I'll just take a belt buckle. Usually I'll just use mine because they're pretty much a standard size. And if this will slip over the hole, or if this will slip over the tongue of the buckle, you know, easily, then that's what you're looking for. You don't want it to be too big, not too sloppy big. So I'll get one maybe just a little bit smaller, but it just threads into the end of it. And then to lubricate it now. Believe it or not, just a new bar of doll soap. That's all it is. And I'll just tap the very end of it on the soap. Just get a little coating on there is all you want to do. And it'll lubricate the cutting edge of it where it'll slide through that dry leather. 
Now we're working it dry from here on. It will never get wet again unless the owner does it. And I'll come in where I had my previous layout marks. And I just, I still cannot get you guys where you can see. I'm going to try something a little different. Y'all hang on just a second. I'm really trying to figure out a way to get this camera where you guys can see what I'm doing. Without my hands being in the way. I'm going to try something here. You're going to have to let me know if this works better for you. I hope it does. Now you can see my first mark right there. That's where our first hole is going to be. Let's see how this does. Now this is going to get a little loud and a little noisy. Oh, that works better, doesn't it? Okay, so if I can do this without banging you. And it may take a few hits on it. Mm, but that's all we're doing. We're just punching holes through it. I'm going to have to do this a little harder, so. And what I've done is I've just gotten my marble tooling block sits on another one of these neoprene pads. And I'm going to have to get a little bit uglier with it so y'all bear with me I'll try to leave you where you can see but this is this can get pretty tough you have to get a little little mean with it on this part of it get the light back out of the way Need belt blanks are not much fun. To pull through them it's because of their thickness. And that one really is going to be ugly. another punch that one is not going through like I want it to I'll do one size smaller and see if it works a little better for me they might be getting a little dull you just have to replace them. You can't sharpen these things. My goodness, what's that thing made out of? Where's my anvil at? I really am going to have to get ugly with this one.
Need something a little, a little more solid underneath it. Getting a little bit too much bounce on the on the punch. So let me get this. position you guys up here a little bit. I've got it on top of that anvil now so maybe it's not going to bounce quite so bad. You need something really really solid underneath it. And there's our first hole. We'll just continue on down the line. You want something to absorb for your punch to go into though. So you don't dull it up. And you can feel it when it penetrates through the leather. I thought my desk here would be solid enough but it not generally feel it when it punches through. I'm not quite all the way yet. Hopefully you still see. There we go. Like I said, sometimes you have to get ugly with it. bit more soap on it. If I can find it, there it is. Something else I wanted to show you too is it's got a little in the end of your punch where it'll just extract the plugs out of it kind of self-cleaning pretty neat I'll show you that they just they just come out through the end of the punch fall out on the floor on the carpet for the vacuum cleaner. Sorry, I was just kidding. You really don't want to do that. A little bit more on that one. Come on out of there. And this drier leather now, or when it's dry, like I said you just have to get have to get ornery with it. Sometimes let's see where my last hole is gonna be. There we are, right there. So we'll punch it through now. And you can feel it when it goes through. I 
And that's it. There's your holes punched in it. One inch increments. And I'll do, uh, I'll do six of them. I'll have my I'll have my center line of the belt, and then I'll go three either side. Some people only go two. I'll go three. Oh no, just me. That's just how I do it. And then to take the uh, take the punch out, these little sets come with a wrench on them. And you just unscrew them. Put them back in your kit. It's ready for the next one. I usually try to keep everything in the packages that they come in. It's just easier for me. Try to keep stuff from running around all over the place. Okay, I'm going to back you guys up a little bit now. We're going to uh, actually do the coloring part of it. So, no, maybe you can stay. Let's see. Maybe I can do it and keep you guys here. Let me get repositioned a little bit. Get my bias put up out of the way. Don't need the soap anymore. That's all for that one. Get my neoprene. And I have these neoprene blocks. I have one that's dedicated that stays underneath my tooling block. I don't use it for anything else. But when you start punching holes and cutting through leather and stuff like that, it will scar or mar the surface enough to where, just my opinion anyway, your, uh, your block won't stay quite as smooth. Okay, now I'm going to kind of move everything back out of the way. And I'm going to use a sealer on here now. We're going to be, I'm going to do two different things on this belt. The inside where the design is, is going to be a lighter. I'm going to try to keep it just as close, not as natural. I mean, the stain will, will color it some. But I want to try to keep it and the letters. I'm going to try to highlight them. But the border, everything around the letters, and then the border out here, I'm not going to seal just yet. Because I want that stain to soak into that leather. So it'll come out darker. May, you know, call it a wood grain finish if you want. But uh, it will be darker, and you'll see that when we start applying it. But what I'm doing that for is I'm going to come back in on the border now, right here at the, where the letters end on, on down here towards the tongue, and I'm going to do a natural colored lacing then. I've got two different colors of it. I don't know exactly yet. I haven't made up my mind yet which color I'm going to use. I may use this darker one. Uh, but I want it to be somewhat the same color 
as I'm going to have the, uh, the interior portion in here as well as the ladders. Now I'm not going to do across the top of the ladders. I'm just going to do on this particular belt. It's just a different style. But I'm going to do it from here down to where the basket weave starts. Probably going to end somewhere along in here. Where the border gets thin again, I'm not going to do it here, nor am I going to do it around the ladders. I'm going to, I'm going to try to two-tone this one. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> and what I use for my ceiling is use what's called this super sheen. Also again available at Tandy. And it's a sealer is what it is. It's made to uh, to seal the leather. And then go to wherever you want to. And I get those disposable brushes. Just regular disposable paint brushes. You can get a package of about 900 of them, I think, for $1.50. So I think what we're going to do I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this because it's going to be needing to flop it around and move it and stuff but we'll see how it goes. I'll get a little bit smaller tip brush as well so I can work the edges. couple of these. Let me finish getting this set up and I'll be right back. And Rosie has decided to join us, so we'll see how this goes. One of our two cats. All right, let's uh, let me get you guys. That's a problem with working. Normally what I'll do when I'll get, I'll go from one thing to another just because of my table is not really large enough to where I can do 
have multiple things going at the same time. So that's the reason on this video of why I'm having to, I wanted to show y'all what I use for the hole punches. Okay, now back to the uh, Super Sheen now. And these bottles come in different sizes. I'm going to kind of shake it up a little bit, not a whole lot, just keep it all mixed up. And then uh, I'll take one of the brushes. It varies on, on my project as what size brush I'll use. My next project's gonna be some uh, moccasins for my sister-in-law. And after that, I've got a fellow YouTuber that I'm going to be doing a wallet for. Actually, I've got several of them. But I'll dip the brush in. Now you don't want to get a whole lot on your brush. It's going to be done in several different stages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start right here where the pattern begins. And you can see how it's changing colors now. That leather's soaking it up. But that's what we want. dab your brush off a little bit because you don't want it anywhere that's going that you want to be darker so this takes a little bit of patience be fairly liberal with it because like I said this seals that leather so the stain and the dye is not going to penetrate as much. It will some but not as much as if it's on the untreated leather. I may have to do this in another video, actually put the stain on because this, uh, this is going to take a little while as well as the other. But you can see I'm just going down the line or the border. Well, I've got it right here by one of the letters. I'll come in and uh, do one of those for you. That's the same thing, same process. Just come in. Now you want to just stay on the surface of your letter. Don't let it get down in the valley or your stain's not going to stick there.
And this is going to go everywhere that I don't want that stain to go. But an upcoming project, I've got some airbrushing that I'm going to do. which I'll demonstrate on some of that as well. Now we're just going to come on back down the line here. If you want to leave it natural, but you want to seal it, videos I showed where I did a wallet that the customer wanted it left natural didn't want any stain or color or anything it just wanted it sealed but I put on a liberal amount of it. And what I'll do, this stuff doesn't take that long to dry. Just a couple hours. And it's a lot easier to put this stuff on than it is the if you're working with dye because remember this dry leather is just like a sponge it's going to soak it up let me let me, let me love on you <laughs> do you want do you want me to make you something my helper is bothering judy right now she's in a snuggling mood and when she wants something She'll get right up in your face and let you know about it. That's part of being a cat, I guess. And we'll just keep moving on down the line with it. But I'll come back and I'll make two, at least two coats on here just because I do want this area thoroughly sealed. I don't want that stain to soak into it. But the stain is really, I'm excited to show you all that process. What are you it, doing? It really, it really highlights your work. Well, what's in there that it bangs? But... What'd she do? Oh, the one, the one that she likes to try to climb into. Oh, the chair? The, cha the uh, box. Oh, yeah, she's really bad about wanting to see what's inside boxes. Like I said, I'm going to apply at least two coats. Here, I'll try to get down to the end on with one coat so you can see, have a better idea. Does this camera angle work better for you guys? I hope it does, because I was going to try it when I was doing some tooling, because my hands aren't, I'm finding that my hands are not in the way quite as bad. And you can actually see more how I hold the tools, how I work them, 
things of that nature, which is my intent of my videos. I want to try to help people learn this little craft. But you can't see it that well if my hands are in the way. Because there are various things that I'll do with with the tools while I'm working them. If my hand's in the way, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm hoping this technique will be much better for you. And then, as always, too, if you uh, if you have any questions about something, if you're getting into it and you want to have any questions about it, then leave a comment or drop me an email. And even if I have to use a scrap piece of leather, I'll uh, I'll demonstrate how I do something. And then uh, and then you'll you'll figure out your own little way of doing it. That's the fun of this. That's the fun of this is as I said before, you can put five hundred leather carvers in the same room, give them the same pattern. And you're going to have 500 different ways of doing the same thing. Go down into the basket weave part of it now. see what I'm doing with the brush. Normally if I'm sealing the entire project I'll just use a cotton dauber. Those also are tandy. You can get a package of a thousand of them I think for a buck fifty. Very inexpensive. But the reason why I use these cheap what I call disposable brushes that they are exactly that. They're a one-time use when you're using them with this stuff. You can't mix your color stains with them. You can't reuse them with another. You can't reuse them is what I'm trying to say. Use it for one application. As I have discovered that trying to re re reuse one with a different color of stain or dye, and you'll come up with a color that you didn't really want. Now, for the adults, if you're doing this with kids, especially with the dye, this sealer ain't such a big deal. But if you, when you start using the dyes, they are permanent, or the ones that I use are permanent. But rest assured, adults, they do offer some water-based dyes. The stains are water-based. So you can recover the original color of the child. But if you're using the others that I use,
then that child's just going to get to wear that color until it wears off. But I've got a workstation here that's dedicated to this, so I don't have anything underneath the project. If you're having to use your kitchen table or something like that, best thing that I've discovered when you're dealing with children, they get an old towel or an old bed sheet and put that down over your table. That way it'll protect the table surface. But I would not recommend doing this on a surface that you're going to be entertaining a supper dinner on. So find something to put down over it. And I found like a bed sheet, an old bed sheet that you're, that's just going to be junk anyway double it over, triple it over, whatever, just enough to put under your project. Those with kids, not all of this stain and all of this color is going to stay exactly on your project. got one coat now on the tongue end of the belt so I'm gonna cut this video off here because I don't once again I try to keep the videos about a half hour let me get this done and uh, get it ready for the stain It'll probably be tomorrow, tomorrow night. When I do it, but I'll get that video out. Okay, I'm going to get this sealed. What I wanted to show you is... Where I did the seal, out like out here on the border, you can see it doesn't have this little shine to it, doesn't have this little glossy look to it. This leather in here is sealed. Now, like I said, I'm going to come back and do a second coat on it because I want it, I want to make sure that I can highlight that. So, I'm going to uh, finish this and uh, when I get it ready to stain it, then we'll come back and we'll do that. All right, as always, we like to end our videos with uh, don't be mean, okay? If you're not willing to treat Jesus that way, then let's not treat each other that way. And with that, I will say adios until uh, hopefully I'll be able to get the staining video uh, out tomorrow. But until then, adios. We'll see you on the next one.